wrapping up Wednesday practice. Obviously, always a physical day for us. Uh, a couple of updates I have for you. One that I should have mentioned, um, and I really I had it, and I forgot to mention Kale Millen. Kale Millen had some work done, so he will be out for the rest of the season. Okay, so that's one thing I had to give you. Uh, on top of that, um, the receivers, we got some good news, and um, and it worked out, played out well today in practice. Both Brendan Schooler and Micah Pittman have been cleared, and they have practice all week, and they will play on Saturday. It looked really good today. Uh, and Jawan is still progressing, okay, to give you an update there. Uh, other guys that had some nicks and bumps or whatnot, Cyrus is full goal. Jake Hansen has been full goal. Outside of that, I can't really think of anybody else, but um, that being said, open questions. You don't want to look like it was a shoulder from where you were pointing? That area. Yeah. Um, can you say, is Devin Williams here with you? Can you come in? I, yeah, I can. I can. Devin Williams is part of our roster. Obviously, we're thrilled to have him here. Uh, strong relationships with him dating back to his initial recruitment. And uh, just um, really fired up to have him here with us. You know, I see uh, obviously he has to sit the year, you know, but um, really, really fired up about that. Do you have any concerns last week he was gone to a different school? Um, no. He's, he's here with us, so we're fine. We're fine. What's, what's that like with all that back and forth between just going up north to coming here? What's that like for you guys when he's just kind of going back and forth like that? Uh, the only thing that's important to that is he, he's here. That's it, you know? So it is what it is. Who's yeah. number three now, quarterback? Number three? Yeah. Brad Yaffe. Mm-hmm. Yaffe. Mm-hmm. You were close to, to getting Devin out of high school, but what does he bring to the, to the table, you think, down the line for you guys? Oh, you know, I think we all know he's one of the more talented players in the country uh, coming out and you know that hasn't changed and uh, long athletic explosive fast great hands great balance and body control can make the contested catch can stretch the field can run the intermediate stuff really good blocker on the perimeter I mean he has all the tools and he's an exceptional young man and he knows a lot of our guys you know I mean he's actually I think him and McKellar are actually cousins you know so I'm sure those two guys had some pretty good battles over the years growing up right so it's great to have him here. A lot of the guys know him, and they certainly welcome him, welcome him with open arms. Shane said yesterday that during the bye week, the offensive line got back to some fall camp day one mm-hmm. fundamentals, as he mentioned, to try and get them back on track in this running game. As a former offensive line coach yourself, I mean, is that something you take a keen eye to, especially when you have a bye week to, to really look at and rehammer, knowing what the identity of this it's offense always, is? It's always the most important part, getting back to technique and fundamentals, because two things, you got to get better. And then you also don't play for a week, right? And you could get a little bit of the wrong kind of, you know, habits if you don't do things the right way. So, and yeah, in the run game, it's a little bit of, you know, when you put a run game together, it's got to be synchronized, right? The blocks got to match up with the track of the back, with aiming points, um, your hat placement, hand position, all that kind of stuff. So had a very good, had a very productive week and feel like we've had a really good week as well this week. You mentioned they played the play, Mario, but just how has Brennan and Micah looked, or Brennan in particular, since he hadn't been practicing as much as Micah had prior to this? They looked like they were back to normal. Um, we'll practice again, obviously, the next couple days and figure out a rotation, but uh, you can expect them to play. Looked like David is sticking with offense, at least for the rest of the week. He's valuable. We just had a talk right now, David and I. Um, I want to do what's best for him and what's best for the team. So we'll figure that out. You know, He's a guy that, because of his knowledge now on both sides of the ball, he's maybe the one guy on the team that could actually partake on one side one week and go to the other side the next week. So I want to, number one, really appreciative and thankful and grateful for him and his unselfishness, because that's very rare nowadays to find a guy that would do that, uh, especially with the load that he carries. You know, he, uh, So again, really appreciate him. And we'll figure that out. We'll get that to you. You guys have had to operate with four, five, maybe six receivers till now. Just adding two more bodies, does that keep guys fresher, allow you to be more aggressive because guys can come off the field and catch a breather real yeah, quick? You know, the thing is we lost them during camp as well. So you're, you're trying to practice and you have to practice the timing of the passing game. And and all of a sudden you're really, you're wearing, guys are wearing out and you have to almost orchestrate the way you practice, pull guys on certain plays. You have to bring guys over from the tight end position, have them rep at certain spots so you don't overload guys and then cause more injuries. That's always the biggest concern when you lose guys is how much more of that load falls on the guys that are healthy. So I think we managed it well. We put everybody on a rep count as it relates to their bodies and what they can handle. And um, yeah, almost today, it almost some of those guys felt like, hey, we need more work. I'm like, all right, well, the rotation is getting back to normal. So yeah, it uh, certainly was a challenge, but I think we, we handled it well. I know that you included Lance Wilhoy and J.R. Waters as progressing well. Originally, you said yes. Waters was out for the year. Is, he, is that not the case anymore? Could he uh, potentially help? I think he can. I mean, can he get back in the mix and actually help us? That We've, we've yet to see where, where we can be with him. 
But the fact that he will be practicing, I feel confident that more towards the end of the year, probably the last quarter of the season, that we'll see him practicing with us. And I think Lance is ahead of him. So, and again, we were excited about those guys during camp. They made some big plays. They're certainly talented guys. And um, hopefully they see the level of competition at that position now. They got to buckle up and get ready to bring it. Earlier in the season, Marcus said that he kind of limited some of the receivers in a way. I hadn't had that trust yet. That was really weeks one and two, weeks three and four. Things started to open up a little bit. Having guys like Schooler and Pittman back, Schooler being a known commodity, Pittman, we obviously know about him. How much does that open things up? for Marcus and for this offense, maybe as far as trusting those receivers go? Well, it helps you do some things. Obviously, those guys have played a lot of football, uh, even though Mike has only been here for a little while. But Brendan's played a lot of football. Those other guys have as well. But it also goes back to how much better those other guys got. You know, a guy like Brian Addison certainly provided some some quality plays and some very productive football for us. You know, Josh Delgado does not get mentioned very much and he's played you know some really good football and, and i can't speak enough about the way johnny has played and jalen red we want to talk about two guys that just pour everything they have into it on every play those guys have been fantastic so again the fact that we're getting healthier is great the level of competition increases and it makes us better is justin johnson medically retired justin johnson will be medically retired yes sir I realize it's a small sample for you guys in this, as far as league games mario but we talked a lot last week about your run game and things to improve and CJ and things, but it's not just him that's down around the league. A lot of the top backs coming back, a lot of thousand yard rushes were down so far. Yeah. Are there things that you're seeing on tape from around the league of, again, not taking shots at anybody, it's just a matter of, are there things that are defenses are doing this year better to slow down, not just you guys so far, but across the league, it seems to be top backs are not having particularly big weeks. Yeah, well, without a doubt, people are taking away the run first. They're making a bigger point of emphasis, I think. The amount of pressure on first and second down is a lot greater than it's been in the past. I think you see a lot more post safety defense as an extra guy in the box. Um, and that's part of it. But I think on the flip side, I think you see some of the passing numbers going up as well. And at the end of the day, offenses, you got to score points. And you've got to not only take what they give you, you've got to dictate and force a hand as well. And when there's an extra guy in there, that's that's going to show up you know, statistically. But uh, in the end, though, obviously, the most important statistic is the victory and production on, on each other. When you guys are charting it, are you seeing that much more percentage of eight-man boxes? Are you well, across when I say eight-man, I say plus one. Plus so one. it's right. 11 seven. personnel, you'll see seven right device. So um, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think you see a lot more movement. I think you see a lot more pressure. I think uh, everyone's become a corner fire operation, you know, which is a pretty disruptive call. Now, there's a gamble that comes with that as well. Um, you see a lot of storm pressure too. You see, you know, Sam and strong safety coming off the edge and people trapped in the corner and taking away your perimeter game and, and your bubbles or whatnot. So very aggressive, very aggressive, making sure that you've got to force that ball under some really tight windows. So, um, and the variety of coverage you see in our conference is, is pretty vast now. This is not a just sit and post safety and it's always going to be three or it's always going to be cover one. They mix it up really well and tremendous amount of respect for the coordinators in the conference.